Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening. Wherever you are and whatever you're doing, I hope you're having a fantastic day. We're back today with our Things You May Have Missed in Elden Ring series, covering Western Lyurnia. Hopefully you're not getting too bored of Lyurnia yet, because we have just a couple of videos left. After this, we're going to be covering the Caria Manor, and then later on in the playthrough, we'll be going down to that southern area, which we don't access until much later in the game, actually. So grab yourself the northern Lyurnia Lake Shore site of Grace just here, and then we'll start heading south, and we'll come back north and finish the video just outside of Caria Manor, because most of the things that you can miss are down south. There isn't much above us. Start heading south and you'll come across a campsite with a few knights in it. Deal with them and be careful to watch out for the royal knight patrolling on his horse as well. Once you've dealt with them, further south still you should see a caravan patrolling. Kill the giants and clear out everyone else that's guarding the caravan and you'll then be able to help yourself to the Carian knight's sword. If you really like straight swords like your long swords and your short swords but you're going for an intellect based build then this is absolutely perfect. Looks really cool and scales with int. Nothing more to say about it apart from that it is a pretty solid sword. Now head south and you've got two adjoining camps here with quite a bit of decent loot in. Just be careful of the fairly strong knight and also the mad pumpkin head that's around. Once you deal with them, you can grab a rune arc here. There's also 10 cuckoo glint stones in this chest. And then up above, you've got six albanoric blood clock crafting materials in one chest and a smithing stone four in the other. Once you've finished looting everything, you're done here and we'll move on to the next tip. Next, you want to... Oh, you bitch! What? Okay, once you've deaded all the jellyfishes... Head to where I am here, just to the west of the camps that we just searched, and you can grab yourself the Jellyfish Shield. And then we'll move on over to the Four Belfries. You can see very clearly from the roads here, but you can access it from the north just here, or you can come from the south like I've done just here. As you work your way up the road, you'll come across a few spirit giants that you can unalive should you wish, and then another one will spawn in as you are just around the corner from the Belfries. He's a little bit tougher than the others, but still an absolute weakling. And now for the fun bit. When they're dead, you'll see four belfries. The three closest to you all contain portals to hidden areas that are inaccessible any other way. And then the fourth one right at the back has a chest which contains an imbued sword key. If you watched one of my previous videos, Things You Missed in Raya Lucaria, you'll know that we already grabbed a second imbued sword key from there as well. Make sure you do go back and watch this series if you haven't watched them all in order. I've created a playlist to make it easy to do so so that you can keep up with exactly where we are and you can grab any hidden items that you may need and make sure you haven't missed anything so once you've got that one head to the fourth belfry right at the back here and grab this key too you can now access two of the three belfries with the portals just by interacting with the stone gargoyle statues just next to them as you would with normal stone sword keys the first one at the front here takes you to an inaccessible area in the crumbling Faramazula, which is one of the very last areas in the game. This one will lead you to a Pearl Drake Talisman, which boosts non-physical damage negation. And then as you're running up the mountain and you see the other two, the one closer to the right-hand side, to the east, takes you right back to the starter area, actually, which, if you're interested, is located here on the map. So that takes you back to the Chapel of Anticipation. You can re-challenge the Grafted Scion that probably murderized your ass right at the start of the game and then once you beat him there's a door that was inaccessible right at the start of the game that leads you to a quest item that you need for Nefeli Lu and also a Warhawk spirit ashes and then finally the one on the left here leads you to another inaccessible location above Nokron the Eternal City which is one of the underground areas and this leads you to a mottled necklace which is a talisman that raises your robustness immunity and focus and also there is a lesser crucible knight there he doesn't drop anything except for a few runes but for sake of completion you may as well kill him while you're there if you've been following this guide you'll only have two of the three imbued keys i won't take you to each of the areas and show you around because it's very obvious where to go in each of them and they're very short i'm going to take myself to the chapel of anticipation and nokron off video now and then i'll meet you back in the next tip once you're done there you can grab the foot of the four belfries site of grace just here and then head south and you'll see another Everjail. This is super easy. Just kill bowls and you'll be rewarded with the Great Blade Phalanx Sorcery. And then let's move on to the next one. Before we continue into the next tip, I just want to really quickly say thank you so, so much for all the support this channel has continued to receive. Just continuing to watch the videos, like the videos and subscribe to the channel goes a tremendous way in helping this community grow and helping me to continue creating the high quality content that you deserve. 
And I also just wanted to give a special shout out to the few people that have become members of the channel in the last few weeks. You do not know how much this means to me. And if you do have a couple of quid lying around at the end of the month, maybe consider becoming a member of the channel because it will really help me ramp up both the quantity and quality of the content. And also when we have enough members, I'm really hoping to broaden what I can then offer you. And just as one or two quick examples, in the near future, I would absolutely love to be able to offer members exclusive early access to my videos along with members only posts and polls so that you can help determine the direction and content of the channel. Sincerely thank you again for everyone who's supporting this channel in any way. That's enough out of me, let's get back into the tips. Further south still, just where I am on the map, you'll see this shack. You will only get this NPC invasion if you've progressed Irina and Edgar's quest lines at Castle Morn, and they actually form part of the overarching Hayeta quest line. I've got most of the footage I need for her quest line, it's just the last bit that I'm missing, so once I've got that in the next few days, I'll splice it together and upload her quest line in full so I'll cover Edgar more then. But for now, just so you know where he is, he spawns right here, and when he dies, he drops a Shabriri Grape, the Banished Knight's Halberd plus eight, and just a ton of raw meat dumplings. I, I'm not gonna read into that. I don't wanna know why he had all of them. I don't wanna know what he was planning on doing with them. And if you go in the shack here, you'll see there's like five more on the ground. So we're just gonna gloss over that and move on to the next tip. Slightly to the southwest of where we just beat Edgar, you'll see one of these guide statues and it'll lead you all the way down the edge of this mountain here towards the Road Edge Catacombs. Halfway down, you'll see a scarab, and when you defeat it, you'll be rewarded with the Sword Dance Ash of War. Head inside, and I'll meet you in there. These catacombs are absolutely full of illusionary walls. So from the entrance here that you see in front of me, drop down and hit this wall directly in front of you. Take out this imp and you can grab the ghost glove wart and a rune arc. Once you've done that, head back out, go left around the corner and drop down again. Then you can turn around and take out this wall here. Be really careful because there's two imps that will ambush you in here. Once they're dead, you can grab the grave glove wart three and more importantly, the watchdog staff. Now move further down, grabbing the glove wall in this room here, and there'll be another hidden wall in front of you. Be careful as you clear in this next room because there is a fair amount of imps waiting to ambush you. And then in the chest at the end, you can get the Rhea Lucaria Soldier Ashes. Head all the way back to the start where we've got the rune arc, and there's another illusionary wall that you can break just here. And you'll see directly in front of it is a path down. Head down here and grab the root resin. There is then yet another wall that you can chop through. All the way down here, one more glove wart to pick up, another wall, and that will finally lead you to the boss. And you'll be facing the Spirit Caller Snail. This is a super unique boss fight. I'm not sure if he summons the same spirit every single time, but as you can see here, I faced a Crucible Knight. You can completely ignore whoever he summons and just beeline it for the snail. You'll know where he is because even though he's invisible, there's a blue glow where he is, and when you attack him a couple of times, he'll teleport. So chase him down the room, searching for that blue glow, and a couple of seconds after he dies, his summon will dissipate with him, and you'll be rewarded with a Glintstone Sorcerer Ashes. And we're done here, so we'll move on to the next one. Head back to the Revengers Shack site of Grace and we'll go to the southeast this time. Keep running all the way down to this tower. You'll see there's a site of Grace just outside and you're now in the converted tower. Use the erudition gesture that we got in the last video and once you extend your arms in front of this statue, a ladder will appear on the wall behind. You can grab the cuckoo glintstones just here and then head all the way to the top and as with most towers you'll be rewarded with a memory stone there's now one more thing to do in the south of leonia here and then we'll head to the north to wrap up the last few tips as you'd probably guessed judging by the massive tree on the map the last thing for us to do here is go to the minor Erd tree and beat up the Erd tree avatar. This thing was taking so much damage from my attacks that I got really, really greedy and we both killed each other with our final attack. Luckily, it still counted and you get the Cerulean Crystal tier and the ruptured crystal tier. As you've probably guessed from the name and look of these items, they're for use in your mixed physic. The cerulean crystal tier will restore half of your FP, and the ruptured crystal tier will cause an explosion when you use your FP. That's all here, so we'll head back to the northern Leonia Lakeshore site of Grace right up the top, and I'll meet you there. Now that we're here, head to the King's Realm ruins just ahead of you. There's a bunch of... 
There's a bunch of them zombie sorcerer dudes here that are just as weak as they always have been, but these guys teleport after every single attack. God, they're irritating. So just be as eagle-eyed as you can, sprint towards them, or ideally, if you've got ranged attacks, then you shouldn't have a problem. And once they're dealt with, you can come here, swipe at the floor, and you'll see it was an illusionary floor. I'll show you on the map exactly where I am in just a second once I deal with this wolf. Head in here and you'll be in a boss fight with a Royal Revenant. Once he's been taken out, you can go and grab a frozen needle from the next room. Once you're done in there, you can grab eight rhymed crystal buds in here. And then you can break this giant illusionary wall in front of you, which will grant you access to the northern parts of this area, along with a Sight of Grace, and most importantly, EG. If you followed along with Blythe's questline in Limgrave, now you'll be able to progress it here by talking to EG about him. So exhaust all of EG's dialogue, and he is a crazy good merchant who sells you unlimited supplies of somber smithing stones level 1 and 2, and also sells you 3 of each level 3 and 4, along with a talisman that lowers the FP cost of skills. Once you've done with him, rest at the site of grace, and then we'll continue north. Now what you want to do to set yourself up for Karia Manor is mount up and sprint along this road here towards the entrance, dodging these volleys of magic arrows that you see. Get here and touch the Sight of Grace to trigger it. Next, head back and run to where I am on the cliff here, just north of EG. This is definitely not the way you're supposed to get down, but it's the quickest way. If you're careful, you can hop down these stone ledges, and then when you're at the bottom, go slightly north, deal with the two weird, disgusting hand things that we'll be seeing lots more of in the manor. Be careful of the giant one that you can just see its fingernails sticking out of the ground there, and then you can grab yourself an Intelligence Knot Crystal Tear, which does the exact same thing as the Dex one that I use, temporarily boosts your intelligence when used in your physic. And that is absolutely everything. And the last thing I have to say is thank you so much for watching. Please like and subscribe if you enjoy the content. I hope you have a fantastic day, and I'll see you soon. Bye-bye.